Man, it's 11.44, guys. You sure? Do? Yeah. <clears throat> Maybe I can have a week off and not prepare and save this for next week. Anybody got something, something they want to say? Listen, I, you know what? I got something I want to say, and, and I've actually put this in there, but it's not necessarily something that I need. But, and I've got a microphone, so you don't have to worry about me. But <laughs> I'd, I'd like you to do a favor for me. Everybody that's, that's, that's here right now, um, where's Larry at? Is he back with the kids? Okay. Um, raise your hand if you, you... Everybody's obviously seen what's going on in Kentucky, right, with the revival and how it's spreading to other schools now. Raise your hand if you'd like to have that happen at MBLC. Now, let, let, me, let, let me just say something. That I went, in my meeting that I went to in Oklahoma City, this was the question that was asked. Um, and one of the pastors had asked his children, uh, was just his, his children and his, his wife, he had called them in, and he said, are we prepared for revival? Now, I want you to think about something for a minute, okay? They've been worshiping God nonstop for more than a week now. They keep opening up new buildings because of the people that are flowing in. How many volunteers do you think that takes? to keep that going all of them all of them yeah and anybody else that's willing to volunteer how much do you think the electric bill is going to cost right how much do you think the gas bill is going to be how, you know I, i'd be willing to bet you that there's probably donuts and things like that that's that's being set aside that for people to come and snack on what do you think the donut bill is going to be Who's willing to lay down their life in order for a revival to happen right here? Because that's exactly what you'd have to do. Everything that you have planned for this week, you'd have to put it off. You know, because you're going to be sitting right here. You're going to have to help people whenever they need prayer. You're going to have to pray with them. You know, when we really start thinking about this, what it would take, what responsibility is it to host the presence of God? Are we really willing to sacrifice everything else in our life and host the presence of God right here in this building? You, you going to call into work? <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> Your boss would be here. So. You going to tell all the, your kids that play sports? Sorry. Because that's what they're doing. You see, the very things that I've been trying to motivate us to do and help us to realize, it's not about our nine-to-fives. It's not about our children's playing sports. Don't get me wrong, I love it. My son plays basketball. But that's not what it's about. What it's about is being trustworthy enough where God says, I trust these people to host my presence. How many of us are trustworthy enough? How many of us would actually just hang out for maybe an extra 30 minutes and think I'm awful hungry and take off, go down the restaurant, we wouldn't see you again? <laughs> I know you would be, Tina. You see, there's a cost that comes with, with revival. There's a responsibility that comes with revival. And we can all raise our hands, but can God really trust us? What do you think? You going to call the library, Jason, and say, I'm sorry, man. It, they're tearing it up down here at the church, and I want more of it. Tad, you going to call your, your kids' coaches and say, man, I'm on the drums right now, guys. Sorry. We're worshiping the Lord. There are thousands of people that are showing up there. And they are setting aside everything else they had in their life because they're hosting the presence of God. How many of us are actually willing to do that? Now I could probably say, raise your hand again. Probably I'd be a lot less, <laughs> a lot less hands that go up in the air when we start thinking about what it would really take. You know, 
this message, I'm going to preach this next week. We're not going to worry about it, but it's about stewardship. That's what the palace test is. And as I was thinking about our, our uh, revival and, and the direction that we're going as a church, two weeks ago, we got a message from our person who takes care of our finances. And we only had $250 in the bank. You know, as a church, we can't survive if people aren't being good stewards over what God has given them. Do you know it's a privilege to come to church? It's a privilege. You know, why don't you go to China and, and ask them about, why do you call your church the underground church? Because they're underground. They're trying to hide. And we're in a nation where we can freely come, but everything else is more important. And so, God has given this body to you. He, he has looked at you and He has said, you fit right here. And I want you to do your part. I want you to play your part. But the problem is, is that we're not. We're not playing our part. You know, a lot of times we have better ideas than God does. You know, we, I think this would give me more joy. You know, one of, the, one of my, um, I heard this, this Baptist preacher one time, he was preaching a message and he said, uh, um, he was talking about the once saved, always saved versus being able to fall away, right? And I'm not going to get into that garbage because that's just, you know, that's, uh, I don't even like that argument, but I liked what the man said. He said, you know, when I was younger, we would go on long vacations, and when we were on those vacations, uh, my dad would be the one driving. And as he was driving, I'd see things that I think would bring me greater joy than what the end result would be. And he said a lot of times we'd be going to Disneyland or they'd be going to, you know, just different places. And he'd see it and he'd say, Dad, 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 can you pull over? Can you pull over? Uh, and my dad, he had one thing in mind. Disneyland. Nope, son, we're not stopping, we're not stopping, we're not stopping. You see, because the fact of the matter is, is that wherever it is he wanted to stop along the way, it would not have brought him more joy than Disneyland. But when we're immature, we think that all these other things are going to be better for us. And so we say, God, God, please stop the, star, stop the car, stop the car, stop the car. And you know what? God's not like our dad. He stops the car and he lets us get out. You wonder why you go through the things you go through, it's because you keep asking God to stop the car and you're not looking forward to the destination that He set before you. Because where He's, go where he's taking you is greater joy than wherever it is that you want to stop along the way. I promise you that. And I, I, I swear to you it is. There is nothing outside these walls that's going to be bring you greater joy than serving God. Plain and simple. And so... Here we are as a church, and we want to reach the community, like what Tammy was saying. As she said that, it's like, that's been on my heart. I do want to reach the community. I want to reach it in mighty ways. But thank God that we, didn't, we had the Super Bowl, and we didn't have Friday night class, or I'm sorry, Sunday night class, because we would have had to pay him. And the money wouldn't have, would, would have hardly been there. We had 250 bucks in the bank account. We have got to learn to be stewards over everything that God gives us in our life. And He has given you this body. Do you really want to reach the community? Do you want your life changed? And if you get your life changed, what about somebody else? Because that's really what the gospel is about. It's not about you. Everything that you see when you go through Scripture, it never says anything about... Well, I mean, it says lift you up, but it's so that you can lift others up. God wants to restore you, not for you, for the rest of the people around you. He, he, he wants to restore Tina, but it's not just because of Tina. It's because he wants to restore Callie, and he wants to restore Stephen, and he wants to restore everybody else that she comes in contact with. And the same thing goes for you. It's not about you. And so if you really believe that God is moving in your life, then help us here. Help us here. You know, the, the fact of the matter is, is that sometimes I don't think that we really believe that God 
blesses our serving. And I can tell the people, and I, look, listen, I say this with as much grace as I possibly can, because nothing that comes out of God pushes you away. You push yourself away from God. You draw yourself away from God because God is constantly speaking things to you to try and draw you in. And sometimes we don't like to hear what he's saying, though. And that's the problem. Whenever we don't like to hear what he's saying, like what she said, she wasn't listening. She listened then. And now it's going to change her life. When we begin to actually listen to what God is saying to us, he draws us in. And so I don't say this right here with condemnation. I don't want to bring any guilt on anybody. But I'm telling you right now, I'm going to let you in a little secret. We can see who really believes God will bless serving. Because those who come in early to help set up, those who stay late to tear down, those who help serve in the kitchen, that help stay, they stay late, they clean up the kitchen. You know, there's all of these different things that we do here. And I don't really, I mean, even right now, the number of people we're here, there's never been a time when we have our church clean up. And you can always tell the people who really don't want to get sucked into it. Because when they do get sucked into it, they're the first one to make the excuse and run out the door. Oh, I, I pick, picked up a chair. Man, ooh, look at the time. We've got an appointment. I better get out of here. You can see it. You can see you don't want to serve. And you don't want to serve because you don't believe God blesses it. You want revival to break out in this church? Start serving. Because I'm telling you right now, we couldn't handle it. The only people that would be here sticking praise in the Lord would probably be about five or six people, and that's it. And I'm sorry, five or six people don't make a revival. Just being honest. We saw all these hands go up about wanting revival. It takes sacrifice. It really does. And, you know, my first thoughts are, I'd like to shut this thing down and just run out to Kentucky. You know? Because obviously they're, the Lord trusts them with their presence. I want to get to a place where New, New Beginnings Life Church can be trusted with the presence of God. But it won't happen without each and every one of you all. Another thing that they, they talked about was at this meeting, what does revival look like to you? And uh, there were several, several thoughts and good thoughts. And uh, I, I kind of had to go back to a, a point in my life and uh, a lot of you guys don't know this, but I used to struggle with pornography. And the thing about it was is that whenever I was in the addiction of pornography, I hated it. I absolutely hated it. I did not want to do it. And every time I failed, it was my last time. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, man, I failed. I'm done, God. I'm not doing this again. That's it. That's over. Me and you, God. But see, this is the problem. That doesn't work. It's not me and you, God. He created the body of Christ for a reason. You see, the problem that we have in the church today is that people are so daggum judgmental over another person's sin that whenever they share it with them, they're going to try and make it out to be something worse. But I'm here to tell you, when we can come to the place where we can confess our sins to one another, because when I finally did that, See, back in, 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 in the past, there was times when I would, I would share it with my wife and, or I'd, I'd confess some things, but I always kept a few little things over here that I didn't tell her. Huh? Timmy, yeah, right? That's personal between her and I. It's one of these days I might share that with you. But I would keep that, that quiet, that little, that little piece over here, and not tell anybody. But when God finally opened my eyes to the damage that I'm doing to everybody around me, I just let it pour out. Things that she could have never found out, I told her. I just started sharing it, and it set me free. Can you imagine what would happen if every one of us did that? The freedom that would ring out through this place. Being open enough to be able to share and confess everything that we've done, not be judged, be lifted up in the presence of the Lord, be prayed over, 
the weight that comes off of your shoulders, that's a revival. That's a revival. And see, we need those things. We need the willing to serve. Laying everything down. We need the willingness to confess. And then when it comes after that, God says, holy cow, look at these people. There are people after my own heart. I can trust them with my presence. How many of you want to host the presence of God? It's going to take a lot. It's going to take a lot, but that's what it's going to take. Well, that wasn't the message. But God is good. And he's speaking. He's speaking to his people. You know, th- this is just a time where whenever God is trying to get people to be real, stop being fake. Stop posting all your happy pictures on Facebook and say, this is what we had for dinner today and on Instagram and all this different garbage when you've got damage going on at home. Who cares about your food I don't give a, a, a darn about your food. I praise God that you got some, but I don't want to see pictures of it. Right? Let's let the Lord Jesus come in and change our lives. Let's stop being fake. Let's be honest with one another. You, Callie, that's all she was doing. Sometimes it hurts when people are honest, but if we really listen... I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm terrible at being honest. And what I mean by that is I'm brutally honest. And I make people mad. And I don't mean to be. But the thing is, is the reason why I'm that way is because I want you to do that to me. Just tell me. Just tell me. And I'm going to listen. I may not always agree at first. But I'll tell you one thing. I'm going to seek the Lord in it and say, God, is this true? Am I boring you guys to death? God wants to do something in this nation, but He needs people that are willing to do it. And we already seen it starting. I mean, I've got a video that I shared with, with my leaders last week. There was a, a coffee shop in Oklahoma City. Some people came in and they began to just play some worship music and the whole coffee shop broke out in praise. I'm talking like concert. You know, people standing side to side. They're not sitting down in their chairs. The whole coffee shop is full and people are praising God. You see, God wants to do things. He does, but he needs a people that he can trust to do them with. At McDonald's in Norway, (laughs) you see what I'm saying, guys? And that's the reason why I'm so excited about this conference. And and I'm I'm so proud of those that are willing to go because I really believe that there's going to be a move of the Spirit that's going to take place. Obviously, with this happening in Oklahoma City at a coffee shop, God already wants to do something. And so, and then in May, I saw also in Oklahoma City that, uh, Nick, you guys know who Nick Vujicic is? Nick Vujicic, is, he's got no arms or no legs. He was born that way, and he, he travels the world and preaches the gospel. And To have no arms and no legs, he he tells a story about being in India. In India, when you're born like that, they throw you away. You know, if you're born with any defects, you're just thrown in the trash can. And so to see this man with no arms and no legs, and he's saying he has hope? Well, wait a minute, you know? And then Tim Tebow is also going to be with him, and so will uh, um, Chris Tomlin. It's, and this is in Oklahoma City. It, it, it almost feels like maybe God is trying to create a central hub here. And so, hey, man, if we can spark it with fuel the fire and jump out to a start. And, and I'm, as, that's what I was going to say. That, that I've, I've, right now, we have 15 people going. And uh, I hope that 15 people that's confirmed. I hope that we can get some more that will be willing to confirm. Because if we can get... 20, 30 people, they go down there. and catch. Think about me and Tad when we came back from the men's retreat. We get 15, 20 people on fire like that back, and you guys ain't going to be able to stand it. Right? So I thank you for letting me ramble, and, uh, and I thank you guys for speaking your heart and sharing, because getting real is what it's all about. Chris, I thank you.
Thank you so much. We love you more than you could possibly imagine. And there is nothing that you could do or say to us that would stop that. <laughs> well, I apologize if there was ever any time I said something stupid. Because like I said, my, sometimes my mouth gets in the way. <laughs> God is good, isn't he? God is good. <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll keep praying. <laughs> I'll pray that he'll give you more grace. Mm-hmm. And, and it would, they would have special music. Yeah. You know, and so what would be wrong with having something like that? Well, first of all, I, I do know what you're talking about. I, I grew up the same way, you know, being in the Baptist church the way it was. We grew up, and every year they had a revival. Um, now, not to say that that wouldn't be something that would be good, but unfortunately we can't in this building. Yeah, this not being our building, and, you know, we pay what we pay on it and so that's where giving to the building fund and stuff like that you know comes comes into to play but uh you know i just yeah i just got one final thing that i want to say and we'll go ahead and close this up and it's this is that god has a plan for each and every one of your lives he really does there are things that god wants you to do that you couldn't dream or imagine of the scriptures tell us that if we were to try and guess or imagine or think about what God wants to do in our lives that we couldn't even imagine that big. But we, and I've, this is a speech that I've been given the last couple of weeks, and I'm going to give it again. We have become so focused on our nine to fives that we walk, we walk the circles. That's it. And I'm so sick of seeing people walk circles. I want to see us climb the mountain, not walk around the mountain, which is exactly what the Israelites did. God has a plan for your life. It's going to be huge. I'm telling you right now, every single one of us, he wants to do big things through, but we got to let him. If we're not willing to let him, it ain't going to happen. Yeah, I, I, I'll close with this story that I've shared many, many times. There was a pack of ducks dressed up all nice, and they waddled into the church building, and they sat down into the pews, and and the, 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 the pre- preacher duck, he stands up and he says, Listen, guys, I just want to preach this message to you. You, you got wings. You were born to fly. You know, the, the, the scriptures talk about flying on wings like eagles. You've got wings to fly. And they said, Amen, Pastor. Amen, Pastor. Amen, Pastor. And then when the service is over, they all waddled back home. You see... That's really what the American church has been about. Lots of shouting and pra- praising God that God's going to do mighty things. And then we s- just go waddling back home. Let's not waddle back home. God's got plans for us. Seek Him. Get in your Bible. Find out what those plans are because I promise you they're huge. They're huge. Let's pray. Father, I just want to thank you, Lord, that that you had different plans today. Father, you speak to us. Lord, what I ask is that when you desire to speak to us, that we would listen. Father, I pray that as I put together messages like this, that that my mind and my heart would not be tied to the message, but would be tied to whatever it is that you have to say to us. Father, I thank you for each and every person here that had a testimony to share, that had the desire to to speak something that's been put into your heart, that had the courage to ask for prayer. Father, you're moving amongst your people. You are, but we have to be sensitive to being able to hear whatever it is that you want to do. 
Father, we love you. And I just declare right now a sensitivity over each and every person that's here today. A sensitivity to be able to hear the Spirit of God speaking to us and drawing us closer to you. We've got some rough edges that need to be smoothed out, Lord. Open our eyes to those rough edges. Father, there's a sacrifice that you're desiring from us. You can't trust us with your presence if we're not willing to sacrifice. Father, draw us to that place. Draw us to the place of sacrifice. Father, you've given us things, privileges, to be able to come to your house and to worship. Father, put it in our hearts to take care of the things that you've given us. I know, Lord God, that that the number of people that are committed to this body, that we could take care of everything if we would honor you with everything in our life, honor you with our finances, honor you with with our serving, honor you with with our learning, honor you with, with everything that we have. We could completely and totally take care of everything that we need here and be able to go out and reach others. Lord, help us to turn the focus from ourselves and what we need and what we want, turning it out to others. Help us to believe, Lord God, that that's really where success comes from. Real, true, lasting success comes whenever we're willing to lay our life down for you. Father, create that in us. Father, we love you and we thank you. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.